But now to the latest on the tragedy in Rock Hill. Dr. Robert Leslie, his wife Barbara, and their two grandchildren were shot and killed inside the Leslie's home. HVAC worker James Lewis was also shot and killed. Robert Shook, who was also working at the home, was shot as well. He is fighting for his life today. The York County Sheriff's Office not much closer to learning a motive. We're told the suspected gunman, former NFL player Philip Adams, lived less than a mile away. Deputies say he went over to the doctor's house, shot everyone there, including a second HVAC tech who was recovering in the hospital, then turned the gun on himself. A lot of questions left unanswered this afternoon about why Adams targeted the doctor's family, but here's what we know about him. He played in the NFL for several years, most recently for the Atlanta Falcons back in 2015. His NFL injuries included two concussions within three weeks in 2012 and a severe ankle injury that was back in 2010. His father told WCNC exclusively that he thinks football messed up his son. It's important to note that right now deputies have not released a motive. They have not said if his NFL injuries had anything to do with his actions. But in the past, we've heard about the impacts concussions can have on players mental state. Joining us live to provide some more context on the sports injuries is orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist Dr. David Geyer. Uh, Dr. Geyer, what can you tell us about concussions and their long term impacts? What we're worried about specifically here, and, and one of the concerns with football generally is a condition called CTE. The, the fancy term is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, but it's, it's gradual chronic brain deterioration as a result of repetitive head trauma. It's not just football. You can see it in rugby, boxing. I expect we'll see it in mixed martial arts. Even uh, it's been described in members of the military. And it's not always full-blown concussions. It's the microscopic impacts that occur on every football play, the blocking at the line and the tackling. And when that happens over years and years and years in a certain percentage of football players, that can lead to this brain condition. Specifically in the case of uh, Philip Adams, we know that there were two concussions in 2012 within a three week period. Protocol has changed in an NFL since then. Why is that? Concussions are bad for a number of reasons and not necessarily even the CTE, the long-term brain uh, conditions, but concussions can cause lingering headaches. They can cause you know all kinds of symptoms. And if you return to play too early after a concussion, before your brain has completely healed, there are actually can be very serious brain injuries that can occur, what's called a second impact syndrome that's potentially fatal. And so I applaud the NFL in a number of sports for doing what they can to try to keep people from going back to play too soon. Yeah, it, it seems that a lot of NFL players especially get knocked around a lot, even even with the proper treatment that we're talking about now. But it is somewhat of an unavoidable injury by the nature of just how the game is played. Yeah, that is absolutely one of the concerns with football. But I will emphasize that with you know this brain degeneration, the CTE, it's only a small percentage of, and we expect a very small percentage, and there's usually some underlying underlying factor. It's very likely genetic. You have a certain gene that makes you more likely to get it. There may be other factors. So I wouldn't say that everybody's likely to get it from this brain trauma, but I would certainly be concerned if somebody plays 10, 12 years, especially if they started before the age of 12, eight, mm -hmm. nine, 10 years old, wow. and then they go and play through high school and college and even the pros, you certainly would be worried. Yeah, Dr. David Geyer, thank you for your insight. We really appreciate your time this evening.